Well, welcome, Marius, uh, and to everyone watching. This is just like a sit-down interview kind of video with Marius, who is uh, or who's been a part of Vue now for since uh, November last year, so it's almost reaching up to a year. And uh, I thought it would be nice to just sit down and like get to. Uh, I of course know you better, but like let other people know you better and know your story, and just talk mm -hmm. a little bit around that. So. Uh, other people can get more of a an insight into your story and how like it is inside of Buell. Mm. So, uh, how are you doing, Marius? I'm doing very fine, thank you. Oh, great. So, the thing that I want to go into first is like your story, basically. So, mm. first of all, like your plan growing up what was it intentionally meant to be like what did you envision yourself doing when uh, you were supposed to get like big and adult mm. uh, that's a very good question actually because i've since i was a little kid i've always felt like mm, i had a passion to do something bigger i'd never like from a very young age i wanted to be a football player like a professional football player or soccer for people watching in the usa or I wanted to be like a movie star. I, I wanted to have the possibility to have like a flexible uh, day to day. I want to have the opportunity to travel, to have like not the same A4 lifestyle. Uh, so since I was very young, I've always like looked up to the people who were like vlogging on YouTube and the professional footballers and the people doing good in business. Or I've always like pictured myself doing something uh, bigger, but I didn't know like quite what that thing was supposed to be hmm. yeah so you had like all of these different options which just had like what was the outcome you wanted from them i see like all of those sounds like vehicles to get somewhere mm. yeah the outcome i wanted was to have uh freedom like i've always had this big wish in my heart that i want freedom not just in form of financial freedom but because i think financial freedom is something you will uh um something you will uh, get to when you do something you like and when you go down a path that you really enjoy doing then the financial part is just a bonus but I wanted to do have the freedom where I'm doing something and working with something I really enjoy doing and having the opportunity to have different days every day going to the office every day and having a different uh, meetup having cool people around me having like these opportunities to have a cool day every day because I'm it sounds very cliche, but I really enjoy just living. I like doing cool things. And that was my like goal from growing up as well, that I wanted my day-to-day -to, -day to be uh, interesting. I wanted to be something else. I wanted to have the opportunity to travel, to uh, run my own days, but I didn't really know how. But my main goal was freedom, uh, to make like a clear point. Cool. Well, what have you been doing for the past couple of years? Like before you applied into Bill and all of those things that we will get to, what did like your days look like? What were you pursuing and working with and stuff? Mm. Uh, before I joined Bureau, I lived a pretty normal life. I would say like the day-to-day -day life was I was in high school and I had like a day-to-day -day job uh, at YISC. Some of you may have YISC in your country. Uh, and I thought that was like from the start, I joined, like I started working in YISC together with my very best friend and we had a lot of fun. And I got into like, I really got into sales. I worked very quickly um, uh, appraised as one of the best sellers in my uh, like county in Norway. And I was like the sales chief in my uh, job. And I wanted to know, and I wanted to see if that was something I could pursue further. But in that time, I was working in Jysk. I had a pretty normal life. I played football. I was uh, hang. I hung out with my friends. I went to parties and lived a pretty, pretty normal life. Uh, I would say, like normal teenager life. I would say if that like gives uh, a good picture. Yeah, yeah, I see. And what kind of inputs did you have at that point, as of uh, like online business, digital marketing? I know you've been a little bit into drop shipping and stuff like that before you mm. actually got deep into it. Like, mm. uh, what was your efforts before that? And at this, like, say this point in uh, late 2021, did you have any ambitions to actually get into that space? 
Yeah, uh, I, I want to say yes, because I, I like read like the typical books, you know, the rich dad, poor dad. I think everyone within this space has read that book at uh, one time in their life. And I also looked a lot into different types of business models uh, within the digital world, uh, dropshipping, affiliate marketing, and the typical like YouTube, uh, YouTube um, thumbnail uh, dropshipping models or the business models that were like popping off on YouTube, because I really, I really thought the whole idea of having the opportunity to work from wherever I want in the world and working digitally would be a very cool opportunity. But I never really knew where to start. So I was like, I was like, uh, uh, like a little ball that you just throw in a room and it goes everywhere. So dropshipping, affiliate marketing, some reading some books, but I, I never had like a clear vision and a clear path to where I wanted to go. So yeah, I had a big, or I had not a big vision, but I had, uh, thought of the idea to pursue something within the digital but I didn't really know how to or when to or like the process going further mm, I see well mm. so like uh, let's fast forward to the point where we actually got to know each other and uh, I remember like uh, me holding the interview for you like for Boo in November because yeah we were on a company trip in Turkey and I was sitting at this like shabby Istanbul cafe <laughs> without internet or anything like yeah. having the call with you like leading up to that what mm. like what made you apply for Bio? what kind of changes did you have or experience like just what triggered that uh, that action yeah yeah good good question a very good question uh my life up to that point was, as I said, pretty standard. Like I played football, I hung out with friends. Was I'm very, I'm a very social person, so I really enjoyed being around people, and that's why uh, on that time I was working in Yisk. I went, I had just finished high school actually, and I lived a pretty standard life, and I didn't really know what to do with my life. So I as a lot of other people, I just started an education to do something. And I started an education on a private school in Bergen, uh, which uh, were in sales and marketing. And I thought like the whole space of sales and marketing seemed like, oh shit, that's so fun. Like I, I loved selling in my day-to-day -day job and I loved the idea of marketing and growing businesses. But when I started the education, I'm a very honest person. The education in itself was really, really boring. It was nothing like I had envisioned before I started. I thought I was going to have like sales meetings and like in practice, uh, learn about digital marketing, learn about social media marketing, everything. But I got really disappointed. So a couple of weeks in, I started to look for other opportunities. So I started uh, researching uh, for other opportunities to pursue like after my first half year or my first semester at the uh, education and I started looking at other opportunities and that's when Bureau popped up and I saw that they could offer me something that I've never seen before like the, uh, the uh, freedom to work from where I want the time freedom location freedom and potentially the financial freedom but as I said earlier the financial freedom isn't the or the financial aspect of bureau isn't what like targeted me the most i wanted the, uh, the time freedom and the location freedom to be and uh, control my life and uh, yeah control my life so up to that point i lived a pretty standard life i went to this education i really didn't like it and then i saw the bureau ad and i thought wow this seems like the perfect opportunity for me so i sat down wrote a pretty good application i think mm -hmm. and then i got into the interview and then i had the uh, interview with you Lasse. and i thought that you Lasse, i had followed you on tiktok before because you had like um you had uh, recorded like your whole process from starting and i thought that was really cool so mm -hmm. i got a bit starstruck when i had the meeting with you <laughs> and after the meeting with you i i was just i sat there and i had I think it was the craziest point point in my life up to that point because I had had an hour talking with you about exactly what my goals for the future were. Like you, the thing Bure was was the perfect fit for me. Like I could never imagine uh, at that time a more perfect opportunity than Bure. So that's kind of where it led up to me joining Bure. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting point that you're mentioning there with 
like the feeling that you get inside of you after actually speaking about all of your ambitions, like, and what, like your goals for the future, what you want and stuff, because I don't think people, especially in that age, like uh, 20 plus, like uh, more or less actually speak about it because they're always following like the path that someone else has led them up to. So you don't yeah. have them like really talking about like what their inner deepest desires are because yeah. they're not really pursuing them. So I think that's really cool that you're highlighting. Mm-hmm. But say after like, of course, uh, as uh, people understand by the fact that we're sitting in this call, the interview went good and uh, you got invited into Buo. What were the things in Buo that you felt really like um, uh, got you in pace to getting to the point you are today? Like, because you mentioned that you had issues finding like the right model to actually pursue. You had issues with, like, help me out if I'm uh, missing on something, but you said you had you had uh, difficulties um, figuring out like where to learn stuff, who to listen to and stuff like that. Like mm. in what ways do you think Buo made you get to the point you are today? Oh, that's a very good question. And that's because like the last things you uh, mentioned there, like, uh, how I got to the point where I am today, that's only because of Buell. And of course myself, because I have put in effort. I have to say that. But <laughs> the education process, the mentoring, the resources, everything you um, get provided within Buell is just amazing. Uh, I remember having the chat with Harald uh, the day after I had the chat with you, where he said that in Buell, you're going to learn three things or going to experience three things. You're going to get knowledge much deeper than you ever would imagine in fields you would never imagine having knowledge in. Two, because of that knowledge, you are going to get a lot more opportunities. We are going to provide opportunities and you're going to get opportunities yourself that you would never have gotten outside Bureau and uh, if you didn't have that knowledge. And the third part, that you're going to get perspectives on things that you had never even thought about before. And I, I remember sitting there and thinking, hmm, how could this be what is that knowledge what is those perspectives and now that i'm sitting here a year later and i feel like i've gotten 20 years older because of all the knowledge that's been inside (laughs) for like the last year it's been it's been crazy and one of the things that i really really remember was when i started uh and i um like i said i was even though i joined bureau and and had like a clear path i was still that little ball being thrown in a room because i didn't I, i wanted to learn everything and learning everything and trying to get into everything isn't a very good business model. You have to focus on one niche and one product or one service uh, and start uh, start from there and then expand from there. And I remember having a chat with Harald, the founder of Bureau, and he said, Marius, I know you can do good things within this space, but you have to, well, I have to phrase it uh, the right way, but you have to... Uh, Two seconds, how did he phrase it? You do so many things and you want to learn so many things that you're going to get stuck in a hole where you don't do anything. And when I had that chat, he gave me like, he enlightened my whole head because I wanted to learn everything because I'm really eager to learn absolutely everything. But he set me on that clear path to learn a business model that's called uh, appointment setting. And appointment setting, you set up appointments with two uh, companies and help uh, one part get clients with uh, by providing meetings between those two and when he said Marius you should learn appointment setting that you would learn the psychology uh, the strategy behind selling you can learn the objection objections that people come with in a very uh, very smooth way and I learned that I took his advice I didn't get, give a shit sorry for the language he told me really don't give a shit about anything else now your path is to learn appointment setting and I said okay I'll And then I learned appointment setting. I got my own agency. I got some clients. And then the path from there was pretty nice because I was then free. I could uh, quit my day-to-day job. I quit my education. Uh, I quit my education actually the day I uh, joined Bureau because I thought uh, it was such a big opportunity. But then when Harald said to me that I have to focus only on getting that one skill that put me on a life path that only a month or two later, I would have the opportunity to be free. I had the opportunity to move to Spain with Lasse, and then it really just scaled from there. And that was like, that's my, 
a big but small history up to now if i'm gonna like explain it in short terms yeah cool so that was like the way you got started into bureau you went into first of all you did the education and stuff and you actually like as you would say consumed like deep education on the things that actually matter for getting you to like mm. start delivering services and getting you to the point where we're really talking about just like freedom freedom to mm. do whatever you want mm. and you used the point and setting as one of the models that you nailed down on uh today let's say it's basically because you went really active in on the appointment setting in march uh so that's six months ago now mm. since then you've done appointment setting but what other things you've been doing and like what are you doing right now uh since then i started my own appointment setting agency i got a few clients and then from there i trained and scaled a couple of uh, both b2c and b2b sales teams that did the appointment setting for me. So I got the experience in leading a team, creating a business, and then trying to scale that business. And it went pretty well. And then uh, I got the opportunity to uh, join the core team in Bureau, which I'm forever grateful for. And now my task is to scale Bureau as a company by creating new opportunities, by creating new systems, by creating new strategies, by finding the right people to invite because it's a really tight uh, it's really tight to join Bureau. And like if you are watching this video uh, I have the statistics if you search I think it's less than one percent of those who applies for Bureau who actually gets invited for chat number two and I would know because I'm the head of recruitment in Norway and I, I think that's really really cool that it's such an exclusive space where you get such exclusive knowledge so my goal from here or after the appointment setting, I learned different models. I learned the uh, to run ads. I ran some ads for different companies and uh, began new projects. And now I'm currently the head of recruitment in Norway. So I'm uh, head of the recruitment process within scaling the Bureau team with A1 talent. That's really important. We only recruit A1 talent and people who are actually invested, sharp, ambitious, and wanting the freedom. And from here, I just want to scale my knowledge. I want to create new companies. I want to create new systems. I want to create new strategies to scale both Bureau and my own dreams. So I think scale being a part of or being in such a big part of scaling Bureau as a company as a whole gives me really passion to wake up every day, do the things I love and being able to live in Montenegro. I live in Montenegro now. I don't think we've mentioned that yet. But I live in Montenegro. I'm living the life that I really want to live. I have the opportunities that I want. And I have I have freedom. I have achieved freedom within one year of being in Bureau. And I find that absolutely crazy. Uh, I, I think I, I'm sometimes sitting here in my chair at my office and thinking, wow, how did it go so fast? I remember like it's under a year ago that I was working in my day-to-day -day job. Uh, and we're going to school or the education the day after. So. It's kind of crazy. So yeah, if that gave like a good picture. Yeah, I did. Definitely. Like, yeah, I really love your story because your story just shows how like a little bit of, first of all, eagerness and curiosity to actually learn stuff got you to the point like where you figured out that the right path for you was to learn something more uh, untraditional. And mm. from that point of like just your engagement in getting like closer into Bureau, actually learning whatever you can, as you say, like you talk with Harald, where Harald had to actually just like hold you down for a second and make you actually focus on one thing. Mm. Like all of that engagement is just compounded into you having the role that you have today inside of Bureau, which we're of course really grateful for. And like over time it's just cool because you become a really good friend of mine as well of course because uh, as you mentioned we live here in montenegro uh we actually live in the same complex right now <laughs> so we have like a 10 minute walk out to uh, uh the door usually to like just say hi and uh do whatever and mm -hmm. i think we can create really cool things in the future but uh so my final question i find this really interesting to ask people because here you see like the differences in what bureau mainly is done for people like mm. what do you think that marius aged let's say 13 marius is trying to figure out what he's going to do in the future 
would have thought mm. of Marius today? Oh, that, that's a really, really <laughs> fucking cool question, actually, because I think me as a 13 year old, never really knowing what to do. I never really cared about school. I did good in school. That's the thing you have to, you have to, I think you have to put effort into everything you do, even though it's not, it's not the funnest. I, I didn't enjoy school that much, but I still put in the effort to be the best version of me that I can. And I think 13 year old Marius would be very proud of me for choosing my own life path, not caring about what the other people do, not caring about that you should take the traditional path. And I think it would be really proud and think it was really cool that I'm sitting here in Montenegro, having my beachfront apartment, sitting, uh, sitting and looking at the beach outside and living the life that I want, even though, because as I mentioned earlier, me as a young me as a young Marius really just wanted to live a cool life, having cool opportunities, having a flexible day to day. And I really think I've achieved that in, uh, I'm only, I'm turning 20 years old this November. So I'm not even 20 and I'm currently living my dream life that I had as a 13 year old. So my thoughts are just like my thoughts now as a nearly 20 year old, that this path is going to be fucking insane because if I already have achieved my uh, dream life as a 19 year old imagine where we can be lost so when we are 25 when we are 30 when we are in this community with people with the same visions people with visions that we want to create new things we want to do cool things and that's why i think like the main phrase uh, in bureau or one of the core values in bureau is doing doing and creating cool stuff with cool people and i think that we are in such a very fortunate position to be the people we are with the ambitions we are with the visions we are with uh, the competence that we have that we can create so many cool things within the next 10 years within the next 20 years so i'm just really looking forward to where this journey will end and for everyone watching thinking they want a bigger opportunity in life they want out of the a4 lifestyle they want more freedom and if you are motivated by freedom then you are motivated to do bigger stuff just making a lot of money in my head isn't the best drive to success if you just want to make money to make money then you're gonna uh, then you're gonna stop after you make five thousand dollars a month because because five thousand dollars a month is a lot in reality to to live but if yeah, you have, it depends on where you live of course uh, of course in montenegro if you have five thousand dollars then you are rich so <laughs> I, i'm thinking this is an example but for the people who are watching, if you are ambitious, if you want out of the A4 lifestyle, if you don't really believe in the traditional system, and if you want to do something bigger, I am not, uh, what's it called? I'm not recommending you to search. I'm telling you that you have to search or the camera is there. If you are ambitious, if you want out of the A4 lifestyle, if, if you want to build something bigger with a community, with the same vision, with the same mindset, apply for Bureau today. That's That's my ending. I really like that ending. <laughs> yeah, so for everyone watching here, and first of all, thank you for sitting down, uh, Marius. It's been uh, really cool getting to share more about your story. For everyone watching that feels like this is, like, feels like the way that we've conveyed Boo is something that you think might fit in with your trajectory, like, you're totally free to go down to the link in, which is will probably be linked down in uh, the description here, and apply for Bureau. And as Mario said, very few of the people who apply for Bureau actually get into Bureau. That is just the way that we have quality checked to make sure that Bureau stays what it is. And it is what it is. I don't know what more to say <laughs> about it. And, yeah. Yeah. One last thing. If you are from Norway and you're seeing this video, I'm really, really looking forward to having a chat with you. And if you really want to be, have a chance of getting invited into Bureau, really put effort into your applications. Because if we see that you don't put in the effort, then we're never going to give you a chance. You have to put in effort in everything you do in life. So if you are from Norway watching this video, put in effort in your applications. And I'm really, really looking forward to talking with you. Perfect. That was another great ending. <laughs> so I, I think we'll leave it at that. So... Thank you so much for sitting down, Marius, and thank you for watching, for everyone seeing this. See you later. Thank you, Loza. See you later.